Namaste yogis. Chris Temple here, teacher at Sonic Yoga. Thank you so much for joining me for June's Pose of the Month. I call this pose either Downward Facing Warrior 2 or Warrior Dog for short. Either way, it's not really a pose in the strictest of senses. Uh, it's kind of a put together a couple poses. Um, with that said, I use it. I use it in my sequences. I think it feels great in my body. And it's a wonderful display of strength and surrender all in one pose. So before we get started, I highly recommend that you do some hip opening poses. For example, warrior two, uh, triangle, side angle, maybe lizard pose as well. The more the merrier, but um, for today's intense, we are just going to start into the pose. So let's get onto hands and knees to get started. And then once you've established nice, big, spread out fingertips, shoulders over the wrist, we'll step your feet back to plank pose. Get a good solid plank, adjusting again, energy back through the heels, energy forward in the head. And then on your next exhale, no rush, downward facing dog. So just a couple breaths here to put some pressure and heat on the joints. You can keep a little bend in the knees as you root your heels down to the ground and you're trying to bring your heart a little closer towards the feet, your tailbone a little closer towards the back of the mat, creating a nice long line of energy from the tailbone to the hands, allowing your heart to melt its way down between the shoulders. All right, getting down to business. On the inhale, take your right leg high to the sky. Exhale, step that foot forward in between the hands. Anchor the back heel down to 90 degrees. My front heel is bisecting the back arch and the toes are pointing off to the side of the mat. Now, if you're not warmed up, I highly recommend you take a couple rocks forward and back into the feet or into the hips to just make sure that they are starting to open here. And then when you stop, bring the knee right over the heel. It's gonna have a tendency to roll to the big toe side of your foot and we need to make sure a full-time job that that's not gonna happen. So take your hands onto the inside of your front foot and then you're gonna try to take your spine about 45 degrees off of the line of the legs. And then you'll just start to walk the hands out. Yeah, it may feel good to come on fingertips. See if that does anything for you. It's gonna force you to keep your core a little bit more drawn in. And if it's too much, you can come on to the palms. Now I am rooting my butt back and I'm reaching my heart forward. The arms are just an extension of that energy. And then with the next couple breaths out, if it's feeling good for you, you could bow the head even all the way down to the ground, but be careful with this. If it's too much, honor where your, what your body is telling you. Now, I just adjusted my back foot because I started collapsing into the big toe side. I want to make sure that I'm staying rooted into the pinky side. All right, here's breath number one. Exhale it out long, thighs are on fire. We don't care, that's why we came. One more breath. And then slowly walking the hands underneath the shoulders. Take a wide forward fold at the center of the mat. Bend the back knee, bend the front knee, just evening out the energy in the hips. And then pause in the middle, hands below the shoulders. Draw your chest forward, stick your butt back, keep the back of the neck long. And then walking your hands to the back leg. We're gonna take a down dog split just for good measure and because it feels good to start that way. All right, stepping the foot right in between the hands, toes and fingers align, anchor the back heel down to that 90 degrees, rock forward and back a couple times through the feet, through the hips, just opening up that inner left thigh in particular. All right, then rooting the knee right over the heel. Don't let that change. Walk your hands a little bit to the inside or a lot of it to the inside of your front foot creating that 45 degree angle of the spine off of the hips. Again, make sure this left knee doesn't roll in. Then I'm walking my hands forward. I'll come on a fingerprints at first and then go a little bit further forward. I'll press my palms strongly into the ground. Once again, making sure I'm not collapsing into that big toe side of the back foot. I'm gonna bow my head in towards the ground. Does not need to touch. That is not the point of this pose. Only if it feels good. Is it intense? Yes. Is it rewarding? Yes. Try to keep lifting through the inner back thigh so you're not collapsing into the hip joint. And one more time, please. 
All right, slowly back your hands underneath the shoulders. Move yourself directly in between the legs. Bend both knees side to side just to bring some freedom back into the hips. On your inhale, lengthen your chest forward, stick your butt back. And then with your exhale, we'll walk back to the original front foot. Down dog split just for good measure. And then lower it down. Take the left leg high to the sky. So we've done the same amount of down dog splits. And then lower that leg down. Cool. You could lower onto hands and knees. And for now, we are done. Yogis, thank you so much for joining me. Downward facing warrior two or warrior dog. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you on the mat soon. Namaste.